I'm Daniel, welcome to the old school house in Oak Hill. One of the important things about cement is having a frame so it doesn't go all, go all over. For the next stage of the cement, we have a bump in the road because there's a hole leading to the basement. The hole leading into the basement is actually a window. We're gonna fill the window with um, plywood and then put stone over that. And then we're gonna put the um, concrete sidewalk on top of that. We might be also jackhammering today on the asphalt. Hi, I'm Daniel from Central and this is another day and we are doing the second part of the ramp and we are framing it and the cement's in and we're smoothing it. We got a lot of work done yesterday and we're getting a lot done today. We got the forms done right before the concrete truck showed up, so it was, it was pretty good. Now we're just smoothing the concrete to make the ramp look good and leveled out. Hi guys, I'm Sam from Central Schwenkfelder Church. Today we're working on cutting out the carpet from the porch and we're fixing some siding pieces. The painting project is actually going really well though. We're here at the site working on a couple projects today, so I'll show you what we're doing. Yesterday we tore out all the carpet that was on the porch and today we're going to be putting some wood on it. Today we took out some of the siding and replaced it with these boards of wood that we cut and we're going to paint it on later. Okay, so Lauren and I have been making this for part of the day and basically um, we had to cut it and trim it to make this which covers the basement. Now you can see how um, this covers it and make sure nothing gets in from the outside. So these three pieces of siding here, we just installed, nailed them in, and now we are ready to finish painting the wall. Hi, I'm Pan. We're at the Miller House on Miller Road. Uh, we're working on many different projects right now. Um, Ryan's working on the roof and we're doing some inside spackling and um, sanding. So it's not all rough. Luke's out here taking out all the nails out of the boards that were on the side of the house. Sydney and we are on the Miller Road.
road site and we are continuing to work on the projects today. We are working on uh, the siding, sealing that off and we're going to put uh, wood on it and then seal it up with the plastic and we are aiming to get the windows done and we are putting up drywall and spackling. and I'm from Central Schweinfelder and I want to give you a status update. So yesterday when we were at the water park, uh, Mr. Maurer got um, most of the plumbing done and today we're working on um, finishing up the bathroom. We have been um, working on a wall and then we put in insulation and now we're putting on the storm. So Doc's message really showed us how the world focuses a lot more on negativity than positivity because Downing Thomas is known for his downing when in reality he actually changed the church for the entire time it's existed. There's a disciple that traveled with Jesus. He's credited with saying some very daring things. Once when Jesus was headed for Jerusalem and they were sure that they were going to kill him in Jerusalem, this disciple said, let us also go that we might die with him. That is not a cowardly disciple. After Jesus died, this disciple traveled to India by boat. God called him to be a missionary and he planted seven churches. And we know that, this is so cool, we know that because those churches are still there today and they trace their lineage back to this disciple. Now at the end of his life, we don't know exactly why, but tradition is that he was impaled on a spear. Missionary, church planter, brave follower of Jesus Christ, and that we know him as Dalton Thomas. A lot of people think that if you make one bad choice that everyone's going to hold it against you. It's good to know that God forgives you if you ask for forgiveness. See, I'm not so sure that we should pick on Thomas for having doubts on that one day when he had such a marvelous and amazing life. The youngest kind of asked the father for inheritance and uh, went off with the money and ended up um, completely bankrupt and, and broken, just made some terrible decisions and he came back and welcomed him with open arms, just like Jesus uh, welcomes us with open arms with our sins. It says, you know what, Jesus came to earth to find us, but now we have to make the decision to return to him. If you are far away from God, if you go back towards him and he sees you, he'll run to you as well. So you don't even have to make it all the way because he's coming towards you. And the dad has to do some serious thinking, and I think he did. Because it tells us that when the youngest son came home, what did the father do? While he was yet a far way off, his father saw him and ran to him. The father needed to reconcile that relationship ran to his son and brought him in. And to piggyback on last night's sermon, the son was willing to confess. And what did the dad say by his actions? You're forgiven. 